What is the footage used in the video? Not blaming me, but I'm the Texas Gunners over there. We're going to garnish all media being used to channel these two commentary review. Hey, y'all, it's Deuce, and welcome back to my channel. Typically, we'd be talking about, you know, Grownish reviews and stuff, but I thought I'd spice it up and talk about season two of Grownish and compare it to a different world since Grownish is, seems to be always compared to a different world, even though, in my opinion, they're very different shows that are based on similar concepts of black people in college. So, like I said, we're, today we're going to see how the season two of the shows are similar and different. And now I pick season two because that's when the basic framework of the show is consistent. In season one of Grownish, in season one of A Different World, you have different casts and you have different like concepts and themes. And so the season two, that's when it's more consistent. And the season three is also consistent with that as well. So I'm using season two as um, a baseline rather than season one. And... Also, we don't really talk about season one in general of a different world. So, but anyway, let's give a little history on both shows. Both shows are spinoffs to successful black shows uh, that are family oriented. A Different World is a spinoff to a Cosby show. I mean, the Cosby, yeah, the Cosby show. And Grownish is a spinoff to Blackish. Both shows follow their oldest light-skinned daughter going to college um but in season two the daughter is gone and we focus on everyone else we're not gonna get into that but we will still get into everything else so yeah without further ado let's start the comparisons and begin with a different world now um in a different world the lead character is actually two Dwayne Wade and Whitley Gilbert now, I'm only going to focus on Whitley for this portion because, in my opinion, and for a lot of reasons, she is a, a better counterpart to Zoe Johnson, the main lead in Grownish. Now, the she's a really, there's a lot that they have in common. They both come from wealth. They're both light-skinned individuals, highly obsessed with fashion, and they both are very vain individuals which they're self-centered is sometimes do cause conflict now where they differ is actually really interesting um whitley is a woman who comes from the south and that heavily influences her belief she's a very conservative woman and she also um her family isn't uh nuclear at all she also faces a lot of scrutiny from her mom she uh her mom does not want her to end up like her so she starts shy so hard to set her up with men but willie is more interested in her academics than you know relationships again a very huge difference between zoe in my opinion we ain't talking about that and we actually um get to know whitley's um her her academic interests and her post-collegiate um pursuits I would not say that uh, Zoe doesn't have this, but it is interesting how they differ. Um, here's a clip from the show explaining uh, Whitley to this guy, which her mom ironically put her up with, explaining to everyone what she's uh, majoring in. Right, I'm majoring in art history, I'm minoring in French, now tell me about you. At the end of the season, Whitley's actually revealed to get a summer job working at an art museum, showing that she is still committed to this major and her dreams. Something I think is very interesting how she's able to stick to that and also stick it up to her mom because her mom didn't really prove of that. Speaking of academic aspirations, student and college life are heavily more focused in this show they'll um there's a lot of scenes of people studying being in class having professor interactions while also mixed in with like greek life people uh in work study and people also having like regular relationships but relationships are dealt a bit differently in a different world like for example the leads Dwayne wade and whitley gilbert they slowly develop relationship over seasons but in season two it's not as instant <laughs> I don't know what you've done to yourself tonight, but let's... Oh, zip it and let's dance. <laughs> really? Better you than some salamander. <laughs> that was episode four. Let's look at the season finale. 
You're not cake eye, Dwayne. Well, you okay yourself, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, it's funny. Here we are, two pretty okay people, feeling pretty okay about each other. Maybe we could. Nah. <laughs> While the two did not want to kiss each other, it does show that they do have some type of feelings for each other. And it shows how in a different world, they develop characters first and then relationships for the most part. They do spontaneously introduce relationships like with Kim and her boyfriend, but it is not the norm. Before I talk about a different world's portrayal of student collegiate life, I want to talk a little bit more about um, Dwayne Wade, which is the other main character of a different world. He is a math major and you can tell because he likes to bring up a couple of times that he has a hundred hundred a perfect score not a hundred a perfect score on the math section of the sat and um he used to be just math and women but he, he's grown a bit he's learned to respect women a whole lot more and he's also also is a great friend who's fought for people literally and metaphorically several times and he has his own individual beliefs about how the school should be run and you know he he wanted to be in the greek life but he actually decided to not pledge but he did not uh shame ron for continuing to do so and he supported him while doing it which again shows to his great character finally we were talking about character, but let's really talk about the cast. Not only does the cast actually have, you know, more diversity in melanin, um, <laughs> they actually are diverse in um, like ages. And we don't just follow students, we also follow the RAs of Sinbad and, I mean not Sinbad, Walter and Jalisa, um, she's a student as well, but she's also a non-traditional student. And we also follow a professor, a chef, and the RD. So yeah, A Different World um, provides several perspectives um, on college, but at the same time, it still keeps the show grounded, which is something I really like the show for, and which is why I will continue to watch the show for season three and rest going on. Gronish's portrayal of college is very, um, modern i don't really know a good word for it but it talks about a lot of current issues a whole lot more than a uh, different world did in season two it also um has a lot more identity based episodes and that reflects the diverse cast now while everyone in the episode in the cast are students because there's dion cole and chris parnell but you know we ain't really reaction the show for them um but yeah the students are much more diverse. We have we have Aaron, Zoe, Jazz, Sky, Doug, and Luca, all representing Black Americans. Then we have um, Anna, who's uh, Latina, but I'm. If you ask me in her race, I think she's just white. Uh, she's a white Latina, which is a very real thing. People forget that Latin Latinidad is not a race; it's an ethnicity. Then we have um, Vivek which if you couldn't tell by the name is dicey i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right but dsi meaning south asian then we also have nomi who is a bisexual jew and her jewishness isn't really that um highlighted a lot in some episodes but her bisexuality is and there's actually a plot line in season two with her having a very um a very problematic relationship with her professor um it ends thank god but I think it's very interesting that they thought this was a cute plot line. But yeah, um, since there's a lot more ethnically, racially, um, it's in general, like the, it's, the cast is more diverse. The uh, episode topics do focus on identity a bit more, which I, is a good and bad thing. Good because we need diversity to reflect America. Bad because I don't know if it did representation well. And more importantly, um, when they do talk about race, they don't always do it well. And then when they're not talking about it, they're talking about like politics because Anna is solely defined by her being Latina or a conservative and she is annoying with her conservativeness, but enough about that. Student life in a grownish, uh, I mean, besides parties and, you know, a bit more usage of drugs and alcohol, it, it's really not much. Um, they do have the twins, which are student athletes, and that is brought up a couple of times. But other than that, not really much to say. 
but I will say they do talk about mental health a lot. Sensing a sense of isolation or depersonalization. Um, I'm sorry, I don't even know what that means. It's like when you feel disconnected or not like yourself. You're like the passenger in your own mind. Kind of like how uh, Kid Cudi felt when he made The Pursuit of Happiness, you know that song? Yeah, okay, yeah. In that case, I've been hella depersonalized before. Now, while mental health is not a new thing, people being learning how to actually vocalize their mental health issues is a new thing for this generation, and I'm glad that Grownish was able to discuss that. They also discussed self-care, which goes into mental health, and uh, it, it was a bit less um, clean. Excuse you? What? I thought we were practicing self-care. <laughs> Hey, if taking a bath with your supposed soulmate makes you feel better, go off. <laughs> Which, by the way, Sky and Junior, besides Daz and Jug, I mean Jazz and Doug, those are those are my favorite ships in the entire show. But um, yeah, I love how they approach that. And it, while it's not like the focus of the entire season, it's just the addition of talking about mental health and like you doing self care so you can keep your mind in check. I do like that aspect of Gronish, but I nothing I really should talk about it for too long because Gronish doesn't talk about it for too long. <laughs> time goes a little different in Gronish while like it, it does a lot of time jumps and it's not really too sure what time of year it is. Um, in a different world, they always had like, oh, this is the Valentine's Day episode. This is the um, Thanksgiving and all the type of stuff. It was very concrete what, where in the year it was for the most part. Um, but for Grownish, it likes to jump around, always in a straightforward. It, it doesn't go back in time, but it jumps around and just time skips. So it can be confusing, but that's also because Grownish has a lot less episodes to work with. And it it, um, it doesn't go follow the school year like uh, Different World does. So because of that change, it does have to change how it's uh, presenting the show as well. So I broke it off. God, no, me, I'm so sorry. Um... How are you feeling? Are you okay? <laughs> Honestly, um, I'm sad. But ultimately, you were right. I just uh, never stopped to realize everything I was giving up to be with her because I wanted to please her. And I just like wanted her to like me. I'm so sorry. Speaking of the episodes themselves, like I said earlier, because of the diverse cast, they're going to have a lot of episodes focused on identity. There was a whole episode on cultural appropriation, which I'm not going to speak on if it was done well or not, because it was not. But we're not here to talk about that. Um, but yeah, there was an episode on that. There was also an episode on, um, well, not an episode, but there was like a, a mini plot on like black cinema and everything. And then the conservative trying to shut it down. Then there was an episode, uh, several episodes on Nomi and her sexuality. So it is interesting. Ugh, I keep saying interesting. I'm so mad at myself. Um, how um, episode plots focus on uh, identity, but not too much. And episodes, they tend for the most part revolve around the same three characters, Zoe, Aaron, and uh, sometimes Luca. But Luca's most time, he when he's the center of the episode, that's because of Zoe, not because of him by himself. But yeah, they focus on those three for the most part rather than spread it out to everyone, which is a problem that I have. But, you know, we're not going to be too opinionated this. Opinionated in this, my goodness. See how that looks off? It's because it is. While both Grownish and A Different World handle similar subject matters, they're not really the same show. Grownish has a more fanciful depiction of what it means being a minority student at um, a PWI. Well, um, in A Different World, it focuses on an HBCU and it's much more grounded in its um, stories. And honestly, it's sort of more relevant. <laughs> because it, ta it talks about so many more things than like relationships that I can relate to. 
or maybe it's because I go to HBCU. But that's besides the point. Please, uh, I'm not going to, I'm going to watch season three of uh, Different World and one season three of Grownish comes. Maybe, maybe I'll change my opinion. But at the moment, they're really not the same show. Um, but yeah, thank y'all so much for watching this. I hope y'all like this video essay format. If you want to watch a different world, it's available on Amazon. And if you want to watch Grownish, it's available on um, Hulu. And yeah, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all whenever. I make, make, what you say, change,